Okay, so I'm going to show the auto merge function in the Creality Scan software. So at first, I'm just going to check the GoPro and make sure that it's actually in the field of view uh, when I spin it around because I want to make sure that I'm capturing the whole thing uh, while at the same time being as reasonably close as possible or, or really trying to get inside of the optimal part of the scan. Uh, as you'll notice, as I've talked about in some of the other videos, uh, you want to make sure to try and capture as large of an area as you can at first. Uh, if you don't see about 20 frames or so after you press the, the start button, you're probably not going to get a good scan, or at least not good tracking. So in the first few moments, or rather movements, uh, of the turntable in this situation, is uh, pretty critical, especially with a lot of the flat surfaces, to make sure that I've got good tracking. You'll see there are a few points where it gets a little bit weird, but it works out as a whole. Um, if I had more trouble here, I could also put in just a, a few markers all around it to help it know where it's at, where it's located as a reference point better. You'll also notice that even though I'm scanning something black, it's actually picking up a lot of the surface pretty well. Uh, obviously the, the reflective areas, it does not do a good job with, but uh, you shouldn't expect it to either. And I'm just moving the camera around a little bit because you can see that the uh, bottom left corner of the GoPro here still had some red. So I just wanted to try and scan manually and get it a little bit more green. Also, as you may have uh, realized in some of my prior videos, I like to use the turntable and then do a little bit of freehand also, as I find it significantly improves the quality of the scan. And just like I did there, if you are scanning and you lose tracking, uh, especially if you're on your desktop, it's not really that big of a deal. Just move back and try and find something that's easy for it to pick up on as a reference point. So now I'm just going to flip over the GoPro. That way I can scan the back side of it. And then afterwards I will merge the two images together. Rather the two scans together. So you can see again, 20 frames here uh, without even moving it. Uh, usually if you're going to have issues, uh, it'll go to like nine frames uh, and then keep going back and forth. And then the second you try and turn or move it, it will turn all red. Uh, but pretty consistently I've noticed that if it goes to 20 frames after you start it, you've got pretty good luck. So again, just scanning slowly, especially on some of the areas that are fairly flat. And because the back of this has a, a, a big shiny area uh, that's reflective, I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose tracking since it had less reference points than it does when you're scanning the front. So on... Um, this scan, uh, I'm not going to freehand the back of it, uh, only because I'm not so worried about the quality of the screen that I can't capture anyway, because it's reflective. So I'm going to do a batch processing. So I'm just going to do the same settings on each scan instead of having to click uh, on the, the first scan by itself. Uh, I'm able to let it run through the first one and then automatically start on the second one. Which is nice because it allows me to step away from the computer if I want to and do something else. Or to show off the GoPro that I'm scanning. As you can see, I'm just showing my angled adapter a little bit since we've got some, some time to use up here while we're waiting on the processing. And then that's the grip that we're selling at Creative Cars website, creativecars.com. If you go to the shop, you can see that we offer it just as the grip by itself. And then we also 
have it with a few different attachments that allow you to uh, work not tethered to your computer via a battery pack and using your cell phone. But even just tethered to the computer, I find this grip for me is a lot more comfortable. And I leave the uh, adjustment for the, the cell phone attached to it because I go back and forth between mobile scanning and tethered scanning frequently, but certainly I, I don't need it right now in this application. And speaking of scanning, quote unquote, wireless, uh, that's the battery pack that attaches to the grip. It just slides and clicks in, locks in pretty well. There's a display on the battery so I know how much left in the power bank. And then there's a data and power hub at the top. Okay, so looks like the GoPro is done with its uh, resolution uh, and optimization of the point cloud. Just doing a quick sanity check on the top and the bottom. Going into the merge here and you can see that the two obviously aren't aligned, so I'm going to try the auto merge, and it looks like it does a pretty good job. It doesn't always, and sometimes like in that corner you can see there's some artifacts, but that's when manual merging works pretty well. Uh, I'll have a, another video that showcases how to manually merge, but all you really have to do is put a, a few points on it uh, on both sides, and it's, it's not too hard. So I'm just going to quickly clean up a, a small artifact here. But overall it looks pretty decent. So now we'll go into a mesh. And as long as the mesh looks okay, then this will work for my needs if I'm wanting to make any small accessories for it or not. And again, since we've got a, a moment of time to use up here, and you can see I'm just spinning around the modular setup that I have for the Creality Otter. This uh, 3D printed version is uh, in Petchy and is clear. It's actually my favorite. I've got a few different colors that we're selling. White, black. I've played around with blue and red a little bit. But I really like the clear. Okay, so there are the two areas merged with the auto merge function and then the mesh applied. Still a little artifact left there, so just deleting it and looking around to make sure that it looks good enough for me. Um, all I would be doing with this is maybe making some small accessories for it, so I don't need it to be perfect. I just need a good general shape. And for my needs, uh, this is totally fine. And you can see not a lot of noise on the front where I did a little bit of freeform scanning after the turntable. But since I want to pull this into CAD software and play around with it a little bit, I want to show off the simplification feature. You can see that the file size is pretty big uh, as is. And even though I've got a decent desktop, it's pretty cumbersome. So bringing it down to about a, a 10 megabyte file uh, you can see it does take away some of the sharpness of the image, uh, so a, a small reduction in quality. Uh, and certainly you would expect a reduction in quality going from the file size that I was at down to where I am. But for me, I, that's still going to work for getting the general external dimensions and allowing me to create any accessories that I might want to. So for me, this looks pretty good. Um, just for the fun of it, I'll do the color mapping and see how it turns out. As I mentioned before, the visible camera really isn't that great, but it is helpful just to make sure that nothing is really far off. Uh, and if you're wanting to play further with a mesh, it, it just gives you a little bit more confidence on the exact area you're playing with. But yeah, there you go. A quick 3D model of the GoPro 10 that I've got laying around. And if you're curious, there's the points on the point cloud, how many faces from the mesh, and back to the color mapped model. Anyhow, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and thanks for watching.